Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History, Living in Your Aquarium. Today we have an incredible book. It's Fishes of the Orinoco in the Wild by Ivan Mikoji. And he has spent the last 15, 20 years, really his whole life, uh, you know, fascinated by fish, in love with fish, and spending time in Venezuela on location on the Orinoco River on its tributaries, covering most of the country and even into Colombia, Guyana, and uh, the northern reaches of the Amazon and documenting it in this incredible book. Um, we're gonna flip through it and basically see a pretty good preview of it, but I'm gonna bury the lead right now. I loved this book. It's up there with uh, Heiko Blair's Volume 1 Discus that documents the Amazon. It's up there with the Peterson Guide manuals to different countries, native uh, fish and plants, birds, things like that. Or Crystal Castleman's uh, Aquarium Plants 2019-2020 edition. There aren't better books out there there is not a better book for the Orinoco Delta than this for biotope tanks than this hundreds of species featured talks about their interactions the nuances of them where they're found and just you can feel how passionate Ivan is about what he does about putting on that wetsuit and spending 12 hours 15 16 hours out in the wild looking for the perfect shot, the perfect fish, catching them spawning, catching them doing their thing, and documenting the jaguar on the on the banks of the river, the snakes in the water, the larva that they're eating, what the water levels are doing, the pH, the water parameters, the tannins, the, the elements that are out there that make up this beautiful, beautiful and diverse uh, nation and river basin watershed. So, you know, Ivan and I hit it off right away when we talked uh, over video chat. He's gonna be coming on the channel. I don't want you guys to have to watch this whole long review unless you want to and, and decide, you know, do you really wanna spend the money on a book? I get it. It can be a big investment for some people. And this book, I paid $175 for a signed copy, but my copy needed to go from the UK to Venezuela, uh, I believe, and then to Miami, then to my house. And he had to sign a piece of paper, basically, and the book, and then, you know, ship it over here. And so there was, I just wanted it signed. That's how important it was to me to have a signed first edition copy. But uh, if you guys want a copy of this book, you can get 50 pages of the book downloadable for free on the landing page of the book for sale on the website, which will be in the description link below. And uh, you can also get the best discount offer there is online exclusively here, which is 20% off. And so that takes the book from $125 because right now the book is already at an incredibly low price for a small batch run of a 400 page photo i mean the whole thing's photos basically and uh, some text you'll see obviously but it's available for you at that price with shipping included so if you want to do that support ivan uh support me and, and you know we both want to do work with conservation we'll talk about that a little later but Ivan is very big on the thought that if you don't know that something exists, if you don't know how it truly exists, that it's not pristine, uh, tropical, you know, um, like the barrier reef or something where all your pretty colorful fish are. In fact, it's in muddy puddles that are sometimes in areas you would never expect and they're full of mulm and um, leaves and, and who knows what. When we realize that those are the places that need protecting the most, that those are the keystones of so many ecosystems, it really brings home the connection between the different species and the different plants, animals, and, I mean, substrates, uh, geography, geology, weather. I mean, it's all in the book, uh, and it's just fascinating. And so 
Get that 20% off if you want this book. Uh, there, there aren't many left. There aren't many copies left. So it's a special deal just for you guys because I said I wanted to review the book and then I saw the book and I said, this is incredible. I mean, is there any offer we can work out for my subscribers? And that's what he said. You know, he came up with that. He's also an incredible artist. So check out his artwork and other books, his lectures, things like that. And also I just, you know, so often we have aquariums like this and I think, oh yeah, I've got a, I've got a tank that's full of other than the Garamis, mostly uh, Venezuelan and uh, Brazilian fish, right? Well, I mean, in his book, I, I realized, you know, why certain fish school with other fish. It, it, it's the fact that, you know, fruit is dropping or maybe flies and bugs and gnats are at the top of the water certain time of day. And while they do that, another fish is getting the, the other areas of uh, food and things that made it lower, like the Corydoras or the algaes being cleaned off of these, you know, uh, the water lettuce, which lives in the Amazon and in the Orinoco Delta and watersheds. And you're getting that clean so that eggs can be laid on it. It's just how everything is interconnected. I mean, you can have more success in your aquariums, less work, a more complete ecosystem, uh, especially when you know the substrates, what they uh, consist of, the pH, the TDS, all that kind of stuff. And especially if you're dealing with wild caught fish. I mean, we should be trying to get tank bred fish that are nice and healthy and supporting farmers and, and things like that in and local breeders. But uh, obviously, if you have wild fish that are native to somewhere in the world and were caught wild, you have a responsibility to inform yourself about that creature and to try to pass that creature's genetics on and preserve that creature for future generations. And that is what Ivan and I both believe in. And so, I mean, that's the lead. I buried it. Go to the description if you want the book, if this is all the info you needed then grab it. But if you want to check out the book, as well as some incredible photography that he has okayed us to look at uh, up close and in high resolution, then uh, please stay tuned, check that out, and we'll hop in right now. Thanks, guys. All right, everybody, let's jump right in on this incredible book, Fishes of the Orinoco in the Wild by Ivan Mikolji probably put a little too much flair on that name but beautifully made book I've made several of my own books published them independently and so I know how much work goes into just little things like like picking where the crease in the the binding goes how it's bound if it's glue if there's thread uh, the type of paper how thick the paper is the glossiness all these things go into making a book and it's just so many hours of work and commitment. So Ivan sent me this uh, drawing, which is a sketch similar to that of the ones he does uh, frequently for art gallery showings and things like that, where he takes textures and images and movement feelings that he is getting from fish and natural scenes out there and basically in this abstract, almost Picasso-esque way, uh, he creates beautiful paintings and illustrations uh, in this style that you should definitely check out. He's, he's shown them around the world uh, and in galleries, both for artistic reasons, but also to raise money for, for charity and conservation. So this book is just laid out immaculately. Uh, I hope that the, the metallic fingernails draw some attention to what I'm pointing at, and I hope you guys will pardon the, uh, all the little tabs I've, I've put in here as uh, a way to keep track of what I wanted to share with you guys. But this is really just a phenomenal phenomenal book and if you followed his work he's got work all over on the internet uh, published on YouTube his own website other people have uh, featured his work and essentially he has lived in Venezuela or traveled to Venezuela for over 15 years now going back and forth uh, and 
documenting nature and fish and biotopes as they are, not prettying them up necessarily for, you know, National Geographic or the perfect shot that's totally clear, but rather showing a reality of what the biotopes are in in the water and where it is. So this book, I mean, just the photography alone, this book is massive, it's well made, it would make a good coffee table book for anybody, even if you don't know anything about fish, it's just a beautiful nature and visually stunning book, and uh, you can tell, obviously, I'm burying the lead here, I love this book, and beyond the words and the stories described here when you go and watch uh, his various documentaries and films and movies online you'll see that uh, he uses indigenous people's music and language uh, from the tribes in the area as a background setting to a lot of what he's doing and just I mean the way he incorporates a little bit of uh, a little bit of magic and energy and culture and history and science all of it into what he does in such an understated way is just it it's it's really the sign of an artist and and of somebody who's perfected their craft but here he goes through and kind of tells you about each of the main ecosystems you know they're very different throughout the Orinoco Delta and Venezuela some are lush tropical rainforests that are super dense with super tall trees others are this black water or brown water that's tea colored uh, and then I love this shot here I wanted to set that one aside but basically that's him for scale and this is just the beautiful Western Guiana shield and this is kind of what separates uh, you know, a, a massive region and, and a drier region of the the area known as the Lost Worlds in the Guiana Highlands, uh, where there's these rivers and these plains, and it looks like where the rainforests go, but in the water, there's, you know, everything from caiman to, and leopards lurking on land, and snakes and frogs, I mean, it's just bizarre. Uh, there's these little oases in that you know, where life just basically appears and is in extreme density because uh, as the wet season comes and goes, which is there's just a wet and a dry season and it's always pretty hot there, but as that happens, uh, when the water falls, uh, the, the fish frequently will get together and they will spawn and have their babies. There's great photos of that going on, of the behavior. And then on the side, so so as we're looking through here, he's got it split up by types of fish. And for instance, this great shot of uh, a pike uh, kerosene, uh is just great. I mean, uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's really cool to see uh, a picture of some of the fish that we don't see in the hobby necessary all the time but he's got it broken down here where if you take a look it it shows you the the latin uh, taxonomy laid out for you and in a hierarchy then it also tells you so we'll just do a quick example we'll do one but um this is such a cool fish to see in the wild as they school in wide open barren areas of rivers. They drift slowly around one meter below the water's surface, patrolling large areas underwater uh, of their habitat. When something edible falls in the water, small tetras swim and group in to eat. At that moment, pike kerosens uh, attack them at lightning speed while they are distracted with the food and strike all you see is a cloud of shimmering stars and shining which are lots of sparkling tetra scales sinking to the bottom of the river so i mean he paints these cool pictures too and and it tells you something about like the fact that the tetras are feeding from the top with food dropping in and um the other fish are striking from below them and explains why the bellies of tetras often are clear and the top is decorated you know um or why there's false eye spots on tetras i mean there's just so many cool things um it says they're usually quite curious and will approach you look at you for a couple of seconds then swim away to do their uh thing and then it has the equipment and when and where including the exact 
GPS, so you can go online or you can look in the book or whatnot for exactly where uh, the shot was taken. It's got the pH uh, of where he was diving or snorkeling that day, the stretch of river or lake or pond or whatever it may be. Uh, it's also got the etymology or where they got the name uh, of it. So uh, I'm not going to pronounce this, but ancient Greek for d uh, darning needle. Uh, probably referring to their sharp needle-like teeth. Then micro, uh, small, and lepis meaning scale, referring to their small scales on their body, which have uh, 108 to 122 along their lateral line. Distribution, South America, Amazon, and Orinoco River basins, uh, and the rivers of Guiana, Suriname, French Guiana, up to 25 centimeters. So to us Americans, it's almost a foot. Uh, pH 4.5 to 6.5 temperature, 26 to 29, so that's on the warmer end of things. It's like 72 to, I guess, what, 84 degrees or something. Uh, and then uh, sympatry, which is a similar fish, I guess. Uh, fish, uh, it's got the Latin names of a few fish, and also uh, it lists plants, which is major uh major and in the pictures you see it so then the other thing you can do is then you find out okay so cool this this fish happens to live we we heard it lives with tetras but uh then we can see oh it lives with these fish too so then we can take a look at the pictures and see holy cow look at all the mulm and all the wood debris and all the you know the grasses the algae the and and just the beautiful time and energy it went into to capture these shots is just incredibly phenomenal so uh i just wanted to highlight a couple of these shots for you guys um just really cool fish uh are in this book and if you have a biotope tank i mean you're not going to find a better source of inspiration information and and what you need to really create an award-winning biotope. Uh, this is just, I mean, it's, it's with an underwater flower. I mean, it's just so beautiful. Uh, and it can take, it can elevate such a simple fish uh, by some standards and just raise that thing into something just spectacular. And here is Ivan himself swimming with a school uh, or down at the bottom snorkeling, he goes in the water with these, you know, electric eels and all sorts of crazy animals that, uh, it's dangerous. I mean, the caiman, and he goes out sometimes, it can take him days to take trucks, trains, planes, automobiles, and then foot out into these places. And what I hope to do with him soon will be linking up with him and actually uh, retracing historical uh, records of, so for instance, the first person to explore a certain region, the species they found, and it, the diversity that maybe has changed now or it's been developed there. We want to go back, look at those old journals. He's going to actually go there, and I'm going to try to dig up the historic references, sources, taxonomy, all that. And sometimes, you know, I, I mentioned the conservation, but he told me a story, him and his sister Yelka, who run their uh, company in the art and book distribution and all that uh, worldwide, they told me a story about these shacks that would be out in the middle of nowhere, essentially, on these dirt roads, and there'd be a guard there, uh, essentially, who lived in, in the rural communities out in the jungle, and there would be a shack that you'd go into, and there may be a hundred jars of, uh, like, preserved fish and plants and, and other animals, too. And it, some of them were from, like, the 1800s. And the corks were rotting away because it's a humid environment. Now, to redo the corks and to add new ethyl alcohol or whatever it is that they're using to preserve, 
it ended up being less than a thousand dollars for like one of these sheds yet nobody could come up with the money locally and therefore you know the corks would rot through the specimens would be lost had to be poured out and they were ruined and some of these fish are fish we've never we've never cataloged properly especially in venezuela they have a lot of fish that are overlooked easily. I mean, if there's the diversity is so huge and there's such minute differences in some of these fish that there's no way someone in Europe who doesn't know the area, especially back in the 1800s when correspondence took months sometimes, you know, could ask, "Hey, is that have a blue dot on its tail or are the is the nose on that red or is that just uh injured or did it come in that way? Are they all like that?" So many questions that they couldn't figure out and so things just were done wrong and even to this day getting specimens out is tricky. So when we have this documentation, this beautiful book and pictures, these stories, the details of how to keep your aquarium and I mean hundreds and hundreds of pages of just stunning, incredible photography. I mean look at this. There, uh, I mean this, you've got pencil fish and head standers and uh, little uh, top minnows and things as well as bigger um, you know piranhas and uh, fish that we just don't legally we're not allowed to see in our in our part of the world but I mean elsewhere uh, you might be able to have some of them but I've never seen a lot of these species for instance here's a picture of Corridors at night uh, the Corridors uh, bre uh Breverostris. I've never seen that one in stores. Or the Blochii. I've never seen that one either. Uh, but, I mean, this shot just shows you how they live in schools of hundreds or thousands, which I've seen video of. And on Ivan's website and his YouTube, you can go and see the thousands of fish that collect together also. But, I mean, as well as that, you see these beautiful plants plecos. I mean, there are so many things that he documents in here. Wild guppies and endlers, the last of the last. I mean, they're probably not even there anymore since he took this picture. This was the yellow line um, guppy or orange line guppy, as it was known. And uh, the orange line guppy, I mean, look at the tannins in this water. We usually think of alkaline water. Well, I mean, that might be crushed limestone or something there, but that's definitely going to be acidic. Uh, so, I mean, this can totally re-inform how we're thinking about keeping things. And this is talking about 2006. So, I mean, that tells you how long this photography, this collection has been in the works. I mean, it's just phenomenal. And the pictures of fish with their fry, I mean, it's just really cool. You'll see lots of species you recognize, some you've never seen before, and just seeing them in their habitats and seeing just, I mean, look at these epistos. The, the photography is incredible. The patience required to get all these different fish is just incredible. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be working, hopefully in the future, partnering up with Ivan and his sister and trying to bring you the stories of these fish, of the exploration and the time that went into discovering them. I mean, look at this, uh, these geosphagus, these earth eaters. Look at the beautiful substrate here that some people would think is, oh, that's mucky, that's gross, better gravel vac that. That's full of bacteria, that's full of life. That is what they sift through. I mean, that is where they have their babies. And you can see here a little folded leaf, another spot where fish have their babies. So it shows you really how connected everything is. And Ivan's big motto is, if you've never seen it, never heard of it, how can you know about saving it and know about conservation or know how it's connected to the ecosystem at large? Maybe it's one little fish a minnow or something that uh, if it falls out of the ecosystem all of a sudden the entire food web can collapse because certain things were using that as a food source and maybe it was cleaning algae off of plants which then gave uh, the plants spare room for eggs of another species and on and on and on it just the world is so interconnected and this book is just so I mean 
it's a sad goodbye almost to some of these species that undoubtedly will be no longer with us in the wild at least but here we've got rams uh german blue rams come from these originally the microgeophagus ramirezi and we've also got uh the altum angelfish in the wild i mean we've got all sorts of stuff that you'll recognize but it's cool to see the forms before any human breeding or anything like that has artificially changed anything and again i mean observations like things like he saw us that whenever there's stingrays there are rummy nose tetras around and uh, i mean who would notice that who would know that in the aquarium hobby but say you are putting together a big aquarium definitely why not put those uh you know those tetras in with some sort of small stingray that you're keeping also here you can see they're, they're sifting through their gills the the sand down in that mulmy layer and they're getting all those the little uh protein and bacteria and algae and everything uh and sometimes it's very dark water it's not it's not the prettiest uh greenery uh and full of plants all the time but sometimes it is. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you guys uh, uh, the book in in part, and you guys can check out the rest. I mean, there are oh, there are 400 pages here, and so this book is second to none in showing the Orinoco Delta and the really Venezuela as a whole. I mean, there's a map here in the front that shows what's covered. And it is unprecedented. The only work that's similar is around $600 to buy. And it's Heiko Blair's book. And it's on the Amazon. It doesn't cover the Orinoco uh, side of things at all. But it's about discus. But here we can see the places that uh, those pictures in the beginning showed. And, you know, the country and the, the river delta. Brazil and the Amazon are down here. Um, but it's just incredible. And then the, the uh, Guianan Shield, um, also into parts of Colombia and things. And so I, I really urge you guys to check this out. Even if you don't get the book, uh, there's the free download associated with it online. And also there is, uh, so you can get the first 50 pages, but there's also just a wealth of beautifully edited uh, footage of his tireless expeditions into these remote locations uh and he also comes by and gives talks to fish clubs to art galleries to uh scientific uh academies and uh and various groups around the world so stay tuned for ivan mikolji he's going to be coming on the show we're going to be chatting uh so if you guys have questions for him go ahead and leave them in the comments here and uh, we can use those in the live stream coming up in the next week or two. Uh, it should be really fun. I mean, he's got just incredible stories. He's got plans for all sorts of things going forward about education and, and, and linking up people. For instance, like when a scientist needs a $200 word processing laptop just to write a dissertation or something like that, and they don't have access to that or to electricity. So bringing them in, in remote regions, bringing them a solar powered laptop or something, cases where $400 could make the difference between studies getting done and species getting discovered or listed as endangered or as um, least threatened. We don't even know where a lot of things stand unless people like Ivan go out there and assess and there's a record of how things were in the past versus how they are now so this is just an incredible book i i can't say enough about it i'm a total fanboy of it and like i said only here will you get the discount so check the description below the pinned comment uh in the comment section and get yourself a copy of this book um i hope that you know he and i work together and that we can start doing some crowdfunding of these scientific projects and expeditions that need help. Uh, and you guys can get in, in on that too. And that possibly we work together on something like my fair trade uh, hopes for plants 
uh, kind of like we do for coffee already. But stay tuned for that interview. Check the links. Get 20% off. I paid $175 for a signed first edition, and I'm happy to do that. I, I rarely ever spend that much money on anything unless it's aquarium related, but I was happy to support this endeavor because it's such a cool project. So well made and such high quality. So many hours spent sitting underwater waiting for the perfect shot and taking it. And, uh, you know, get that discount and you'll get the book for $100 with shipping included. I mean, it's basically like getting the book for $75 when it's normally $200. It's an exclusive just from our channel. He, his sister, and I chatted for a good three and a half hours when we were supposed to talk for a minute. <laughs> and uh, so we really hit it off. And I said, you know what? I, I love the book so much after I had received it that I want to feature it. I want to encourage it. There's only a thousand copies of the book. There's less than that. There's like 400 left. This will be a collector's edition. The Heiko Blair version of this book that's about discus in the Amazon, that book now is going for upwards of $400, $500, up into the thousands of dollars for pristine copies. So this will also be a collector's piece as well. So um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this book, or at least the 50 pages, which you go to the book's landing page site. You don't have to buy the book or anything, but you enter your name. Sign up for their newsletter, which they're not going to sell your email info, but they will send updates on uh, charity, on conservation work, and on new work that Ivan has done. And you guys will get the downloadable high-res 50-page version of this book ahead of time while you wait for it to arrive. Um, this is the book to allow you to win something like an ADA Aquascape uh, Biotope contest or Heiko Blair's or the Russian contest or the Chinese contest. There is a growing field and also just letting your fish live a hap happy natural existence. So much info is in this book about that. So thanks for your time. That's the book review and have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching The Secret History, Living in Your Aquarium. I'd love it if you'd hit that like button if you enjoyed this, uh, if I earned it this time for you on the way out. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and uh, subscribe if you want further updates from me. If not, then no worries. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.